Hello and welcome to today's video called Pattern School, How to Reduce Colors in Photoshop. And if you don't know me, I am Elizabeth Silver. I am a professional surface pattern designer. I've been designing prints and patterns and illustrations for products for 18 years now, almost 18 years. And I started out my career working in-house and this is where I learned this method that we're going to be talking about today. Also, I'd like to suggest you check out my Surface Pattern Boss Toolkit, which is a growing resource library of bonus videos, creative business advice, design trend and layout guides and more. And it is free. I'm going to link it below in the description. All right. Admin has been taken care of. Let's get to the topic at hand. So I personally love me some Adobe Illustrator and I try to keep it about 85% of my design work in Illustrator, but sometimes you need Adobe Photoshop and sometimes you need to do a design that is limited colors. So when patterns are getting printed on fabrics, often there is a color limit because the inks are printed in screens. So all the yellows in the design print first, then green, then gray, whatever the colors are. And once all the screens have been printed, you've got beautiful, colorful printed fabric. So to see this concept more clearly, search rotary printing on YouTube and watch some of the factory videos. It's mesmerizing really. So I recently had to create a pattern for a client that was very marbleized in texture and it needed to look sort of photo real, but it also had to be eight colors because it was going to be for women's apparel. If you find yourself with a similar request to reduce your hand painted or effects ridden work down to a set number of colors, I'm going to give you a super quick tutorial on the basics of this. There is a bit of an art to doing this and definitely practice will, will make you much better and faster at this, but here's the method that will get you started. This is a watercolor pattern that I created and scanned in. And right now this has a ton of colors. I mean, it looks like dark blue, light blue and purple, but of course, if we zoom in, we can see, you know, all the varieties of of those colors and to print this accurately it would you know it would require a lot of different colors so let's imagine that a client came to me and having seen this texture wanted to make it into a pattern for women's wear and that pattern had a maximum of eight colors all right so my first step would be to put this in repeat. I would most likely in this case choose to put this in repeat even before the colors are reduced. That just kind of makes it easier to get a good repeat because I can sort of blend the colors with the stamp tool and do a variety of things that are harder to do once you've reduced the colors. It depends on the pattern. Sometimes I choose to do it afterwards because it's a little bit easier to sort of draw in with a, a certain color or something. But in this case, I would probably put this into repeat first. Then once I had it in repeat, I have to get it down to eight colors. So let me show you the method to do this there. This could be, and this is a class. I mean, a full class. I know people who have classes on this. This is a long, you know, a, a process that has a lot of fine tuning to it. So I'm really, really just giving you the super basics in case you ever find yourself in a jam where you're like, oh no, they want me to reduce this and I'm just gonna, what am I gonna do? Like I have no clue how to do it. This is just giving you the overview, okay? So what I usually do is I'm going to start by going to filter, noise, and dust and scratches. And dust and scratches, what that does is it basically just kind of smooths the pattern out slightly, which makes it easier to color reduce because if you're seeing all the minute, tiny, tiny like speckles that are on the paper and everything like that, then when you're reducing colors, the computer is picking up that texture and it's giving it even more like information to process basically. So sometimes, starting with dust and scratches kind of smooths things over just a bit and makes it a little bit easier for the computer to do its color reduction thing. So usually I do one or two pixels. One is the least, you know, distortion. So if I'm showing you preview, 
you can see very slight changes. I'm going back and forth. And then this is what a very dust and scratch is. Like that's what you can do, but of course that would be too smooth. So basically it wouldn't be true to the original art. Um, so I do one or two, two pixels. And in this case, I'm gonna do two because it is a watercolor. So it's okay if it kind of runs together a little bit. And I think that that is a good balance between my original art and just a little bit smoother. So I'm pushing okay there. And now that I've smoothed it just a little bit, got it a little bit prepped, I'm gonna go to image mode indexed color. And this is where all the magic happens. And as I said, I'm giving you such a quick overview because there are many, many techniques to really optimize this. But by starting with index color, I'm gonna take off the preview button for a minute so we don't get distracted. There are a lot of different options here. Basically, you're either going to be working within the local selective or custom. And local selective is where you can start. And basically, local selective is the computer doing its thing, the computer figuring out what is best. And you can put the number of colors that you, you are given. Um, Another technique, if you're not getting exactly what you want to see, is to add additional colors and get it to a point where it looks nice and then sort of go in and do a little bit of manual work. But again, this is a high level version of this. So, and forced is currently gonna be none. When you're, in, you're working with local selective, you're not forcing any colors. And diffusion can be none depending on the pattern or or sorry, dithersh can be none or diffusion. Those are like kind of the two options and the percentage. So I'm gonna show you the difference and show you what, what comes when I do my preview. So if we do none, and I'm gonna do, I guess, eight colors. I'm gonna do nine because if the buyer said I have eight colors, the white does not count. That's the ground that they're printing on. So um, I'm gonna do nine colors, force none, and let's just see what happens preview it's processing okay so now this is down to nine colors the darkest blue medium light medium light medium light okay so that's it but if we look at preview we can see this is not you know the greatest rendition of this but if you needed to do something quick this could definitely work however you do have some options here so the next is to go to diffusion. Now, what diffusion is, is basically instead of a hard line between the colors, you get sort of an airbrushed effect. And the amount of diffusion, the percentage of diffusion is basically how much airbrushing you're doing. And depending on printing technique, um, this can really, really make a big difference. So look, I changed this to diffusion. That was the only thing I did. And already this looks so much better. It looks practically, you know, practically like the original. The thing with diffusion is if I say, okay, that separates it. And now we can kind of zoom in and see. This has done a lot of sort of dot work. <laughs> and that can be very difficult to print rotary style because um, it's very fine. These are just individual pixels. Um, again, this would be something you would have to discuss with your client, or maybe you would just turn it in like this and let them tell you that this is too fine. But I'm going to go backwards here to this, an image mode index color. And I'm going to turn this down to 30%. Oops and see what the difference is. So now you can kind of see that there's a little bit of, you know, the line isn't as as hard line is not it's a little bit more phased in, but you can see that it's it's farther away from the original artwork as well. So maybe 50% is sort of a good middle ground. If I select that go in and see and you know there is a lot of small dot work but again you got it down to eight colors nine colors so you know this might be something that you could just hand in as is 
Okay, so the other thing that you can do with index color, going into index color, is custom. And custom will pop up a window like this for you. And if you have nine colors, this is giving you sort of the automatic, these are the colors that the computer thinks are the most prevalent. For some reason, when there's white in a pattern, there's often this bright yellow, and I honestly am not even sure how to, how to get rid of it. But basically what you might use the custom for is if the computer is automatically picking up colors and saying, and choosing colors that it's missing some colors. So for example, if this artwork was mostly purple, medium blue and light blue, but I had a few little highlights of um, orange, just like a few tiny little strokes. And it was looking at this print, it kind of processes and it sees that it's mostly purples and, and blues, and it doesn't pick up those few little shots of orange then we want it to pick up those orange highlights. And that is when we would go in and select the orange to make sure that it registers on the color spectrum. So let's see if we can do a little version of that. I'm gonna grab some orange, I'm gonna do a little brush work here and see if we can sort of mimic so let's imagine now that this is my pattern and I have these little orange shots of color in here and let's see what the computer comes up with. Index color, when I select nine automatically, let's see what it does. It found the orange, okay? So it did reduce and find the orange. And when I click custom, it has made a position for the orange and it must have eliminated one of the tones of the blues. So it does a good job, but sometimes it can miss that color. And that's when you might take, if this was still that pale blue, you double click and you can usually select something from here you go. So if, if I needed to select this orange, I would select it from the pattern and then it would make that a color, it would show it off, and then I've got it down to nine and it's custom. And there we go. So as you can see, this tool is very powerful, but there is a lot of things you can do with it. Um, as I said, this is just a really basic way to show you that color reducing is image, mode, indexed color, and you can play around with the settings to some degree and get exactly what you're looking for. Hopefully you found that helpful. Thanks so much for joining me. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at eSilverDesign, and I will talk to you next time.